Hi everyone and welcome back to another health promotion class. Uh, we're going to be talking about bone health and heart health today. So we're going to start off with a bone health. And I have a question. So why do we keep our bones healthy? You can pause the video here and have a quick discussion of why do you think we keep our bones healthy and why it's important to have bones. So the reason we keep our bones healthy, because it's because our bones are very important. They give us our shape, our body its shape, and they help us move, eat, and speak. So without our bones, we'd be just a big blob on the floor of skin and muscle. We won't have anything to keep us upright. So I won't be able to sit on my chair right now, or you wouldn't be able to stand. And even just our jawbone, without it, I can't talk to you guys right now, and I wouldn't be able to eat as well. So our bones are really important to give us a structure to our body. Bones also protect our lungs and our heart and other organs from injury. So you have your heart beating away here and you're breathing with your lungs. And if you just feel your side of your body, you can probably feel your rib cage, okay? And this rib cage, cage here is your bones protecting your heart and lungs, protecting your internal organs. So if I didn't have a rib cage, guys, and someone hit off me and hit off my lungs and heart, I'm sure you'd feel it and it could cause some serious amount of injury or damage. So that's what our bones do, it protects us. And then also bones are, uh, produce our blood cells, like help keep us healthy. So if you took a bone and you cut it in half and you look down the middle, there's a thing called bone marrow. And bone marrow is what produces our blood cells so that we can be healthy and live pretty much as well. So it gives us our blood and our blood cells so they can be passed around our body. So how do we build strong bones, okay? So we eat and drink lots of calcium, and remember, calcium comes from our food group dairy, so things like our cheese and our milk and our yogurts. And we have to have lots of vitamin D, and the sun is a great way of getting it. And also to do lots of physical activity and exercise. So by doing physical activity and exercise, not just good for our muscles and our health, it's also really good to keep our bones really, really strong. Okay, so osteoporosis, what is it? Has anyone heard of it before? And it's okay if you haven't because I'll explain what it is. So osteoporosis is the weakening and thinning of our bones. So osteo literally means bones and porosis translates to holes. So it literally translates to holes in our bone. Okay, so there's a picture here. So on the left hand side, we have our normal bone and you can see there's only really tiny little holes for all our nutrients to pass through and everything, that, everything good for us that's pass through. And on the right hand side is a bone with osteoporosis. And this bone has really large holes. Can you see the difference between the normal bone and the bone with osteoporosis? So the large holes create a really big air space or spaces in our bones, which causes our bones to become really weak and thin. So if I hit my arm off a table right now with my normal bones, nothing would happen. Probably maybe at worst a little bruise. But if I hit my hand off really hard off the table and I had osteoporosis, there's a good chance I could fracture or break my hand. Okay? So there's a lot of possible risk factors for osteoporosis. One being gender. Unfortunately, females have a higher risk of developing osteoporosis. It doesn't mean that we will get it, but it means we have a bit higher chance of getting osteoporosis compared to guys. And then there's also family history. So if your mom and your dad both had osteoporosis, there's a high risk factor that you might develop it when you grow up. But again, it doesn't mean that you will, but it just means you have a higher chance of uh, developing it. So a low body weight. When you don't have enough nutrients or enough calcium and vitamin D coming into your body, your body can develop osteoporosis this way. Unhealthy eating. So if I ate McDonald's every single day, guys, what do you think? Do you think I would be healthy or unhealthy? Unhealthy is the right answer. So when you're eating McDonald's every day, you won't be getting the calcium and vitamin D that you need. An inactive lifestyle is also a risk factor. So we all know that being physically active and physically fit all the time is really, really good for our bones. So if you stop sports or exercise completely, it would be have a really a knock on heart effect on your bones. The likes of smoking as well, we all know isn't good for us. So it affects our bones and uh, puts us at a higher risk of develop, developing osteoporosis. And then unfortunately some medical conditions um, might come along with osteoporosis. Okay, 
So we begin here the lineup of five individuals. And in this lineup, I want you to tell me who has osteoporosis. Okay. You can guess more than one person, or if it's just one person you think. Okay, we'll start from left to right. So this lady at the end here on the left, very left hand side, she's in about her 20s, mid, uh, early 20s, mid 20s, and she's asking, oh, do I have osteoporosis? Then the lady next to her, she's probably in her 50s, and she's asking again, do I have osteoporosis? This uh, gentleman in the wheelchair was in an accident. Do you think he has osteoporosis? The lady next to her that looks really fit and healthy and trains a lot, too much. She overtrains. okay? Does she have osteoporosis? And then a the gentleman, the scary looking man on the very right hand side, he works very late nights. So do you think he has osteoporosis? I'll give you guys a minute. You can pause the video, have a quick chat with everyone and see what, who do you think has osteoporosis? Okay, so the answer is all of them. Okay, it's quite shocking. You wouldn't think so. So I'll just go back. So you wouldn't think by looking at that every single one of these pe people in this picture has osteoporosis. And that's because we can't see it. Okay, you're looking at yourself right now. I can't see my bones directly, or I can't see into my under my skin and in my bones. So you can't tell if you're osteoporosis unless you go to the doctor and they do a DEXA scan with you, or unfortunately, if you have a bad fall and you break an arm or a leg. So this lady at the very left-hand side, the young lady that we said was only in her 20s, she has osteoporosis due to genetics, her family history. So her parents both have osteoporosis and then unfortunately she developed it. And then this lady next to her, the older lady who's in her 50s, just due to her uh, gender and her age, uh, she developed osteoporosis. The man in the wheelchair, he was active before and lived an active lifestyle, but then he had uh, a car accident. And then he also developed osteoporosis because he stopped exercising and didn't do any physical activity. So that way he developed osteoporosis. The lady who overtrains, so she trains way too much and doesn't let her body rest and doesn't eat the right nutrients and get enough calcium and vitamin D for her body. So she developed osteoporosis, even though she trains a lot. But when you train too much, it's not good. Enough. It's not good as well. You need to find the balance of between training and resting. And then the gentleman, the scary looking man I said on the very right hand side, he works late nights. So he's a poor diet. He's unhealthy eating. So because he works late nights, he orders a lot of takeaways and has lots of McDonald's. And that's why he developed osteoporosis. Okay, there's some explanation there. Okay, so vitamin D and calcium. So calcium is very important to keep our bones nice and strong. And we all know that and we get our calcium from our dairy. However, we also need vitamin D to help our bodies absorb calcium too. Vitamin D is just as important. So if I ate the right amount of calcium every single day and got the right portions in and had zero vitamin D, I would not be able to use any of that calcium because I need vitamin D to use up the calcium. If that's a little bit confusing, bear with me. So without vitamin D, I can't use my calcium. So if I eat my right amount of calcium every single day and I have vitamin D as well, then they work together and they work through my body, okay? So there's two ways we get vitamin D. One is from sunlight and the other is through our diet. So through sunlight, we get our vitamin D through the rays of the sun and our skin absorbs the vitamin D into our bodies. But you have to remember to wear sun cream, okay? So you have to protect your body as well. We don't want any sunburn or anything. So maybe a sun hat, and maybe some sunglasses if you need to, but sun cream is really important if you're going to sitting out in the sun to get your vitamin D. And then also your diet. So some foods have vitamin D. Examples are eggs, margarine, and oily fish. So oily fish are things like salmon, mackerel, and sardines. And then there are some foods that have added vitamin D, like breakfast cereals and milk. I don't know if you've heard of super milk before, but if you have, that has added calcium and vitamin D, so which is even better for us. Okay, so we're going to move on to our heart health. So why do we need to have a healthy heart? Again, you can pause the video right here and think about why it's important to keep our heart really, really healthy. 
All right, so the heart plays a really important role for, by pumping the blood around our body. So that's why we have to keep it healthy. So if your uh, heart is pumping away like this, and then you're eating McDonald's every day and a layer of fat comes around your heart, it's gonna coat that heart. It's gonna be really hard for this heart to be pumping. It's gonna have to work extra hard, okay? That's why we have to keep it healthy to make sure there's no fat covering your heart and so it can pump away and pump the blood around your body. And your blood is what carries the food and oxygen to all of our muscles. So your heart pumps the blood all the way from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Your heart is what pumps the blood all the way around our body. Okay. Now, if we have a poor lifestyle, there will be a lot of risk factors that increases our risk of heart disease. So problems with our heart. The good news is that we can change these lifestyle factors so it reduces our risk of heart disease. But some of these risk factors are, for example, unhealthy diet. So if you don't eat your proper fruit and veg and all the right foods that you know you should be eating, that can lead to heart disease. High blood pressure and cholesterol, that can lead to heart disease. Smoking and alcohol. Being overweight or being obese. So if you're at, uh, if you're Unhealthy eating can lead you to over, being overweight and that can have an effect on your heart. And then physical in, inactivity. So when you don't do any physical activity. So we all know, as I said before, that physical activity is really good for us. So if we did no activity, physical activity, no exercise, it can really have um, a bad effect on our heart and increase our risk of heart disease. So there's ways to decrease your cholesterol and improve your lifestyle, okay? So if you're overweight, it's really important to get down to a healthy weight. We can eat more fruit and vegetables. We can eat more whole grain breads, pastas, and cereals. So this is um, all our uh, brown carbohydrates. We can choose lean meats and cut off the visible fat off all the cuts of our meats. So it's important that like, say for example, you're having your breakfast and you have your bacon, and you have this juicy piece of fat next to our bacon, it's good, it's better for us to cut off that fat and just eat the lean meat. And to choose our low fat dairy and butter options. Remember I, we said before that low fat and full fat have the exact same amount of calcium, they just have different fat contents. So it's always better to choose your low fat dairy options. And same with low fat methods of cooking. So grilling and putting things in the oven is much healthier for us than soaking things in oil or deep fat frying them okay and then also sometimes your doctor may advise you to take medication to help lower your cholesterol so how do we keep our heart healthy very similar so we will have to be more physically active okay we have to get our exercise in we have to make sure we're getting our physical activity in if you smoke try to stop smoking or cut down your smoking okay because we all know smoking is not good for us so it's important to eat a balanced diet to keep our heart healthy. Remember, McDonald's is gonna give you a layer of fat that's gonna cover your heart, so we need to eat nice and healthy so there's no fat and our heart can pump away. Uh, it's important to drink less alcohol. It's okay in moderation. Having a drink once in a while is okay, but if you drink too much, it's not good for us. Be at a healthy weight, so it's important to be healthy inside and out. And it's learn to relax and take time for yourself. So you can't be on the go and super busy all the time and doing too much. Remember, you can't overtrain yourself. So it's important to relax too. And then have regular blood pressure and cholesterol checks with your doctor. So making sure you visit your doctor is really important because they check regularly to make sure your heart is healthy and to make sure you're healthy. So if you have a healthy heart, you're going to be healthy. So they can check your blood pressure and cholesterol for when you go for your checkup. And if it's high, they might tell you to make some changes to your diet or give you medication or even get you to exercise more. But the most important thing to take is that exercise is the best medicine and is one of the best ways to keep your heart healthy and is free, okay? So it's free to charge you to be healthy, doing exercise, okay? So going for a walk is a great way, going for maybe a run or going, for, going to the gym or just doing your exercise and your sports is the best way to keep your heart healthy. And again, the most important thing, it's a free thing to do as well. So there's no reason you shouldn't try and exercise to keep, your, keep a healthy heart. Okay, so our task for next week, or for this week's uh, task, I mean, is to make one heart health change. So either do 30 minutes of physical activity five days a week, or maybe choosing low fat dairy options instead of full fat, or choosing 
um, brown carbohydrates like brown bread and pasta and rice compared to white. And then fill it in in your task diary. So it'll look like what's on the screen here. Uh, just fill in your task diary and I hope you do okay with that. So thanks for coming today, guys, and listening to uh, our health promotion class. And we will see you next week.